Hi guys, it's Claire from Thirsty Brush and welcome to another card making video. So it's Sunday, so a nice chilled out card for you. We're using our Eat the Shoe Fits stamp and die set and the embellishments adorn it too, which come with it if you bought it in a bundle from Crate and Craft. So I'm going to uh, first of all create a background for my shoes. So this is the adorn it set. So there's one and two with different embellishments and I'm going to use a light grey colour to stamp one of the uh, little butterflies here. Um, because I like to use a block when I'm doing random background making, um, I'm just going to use a small one here because I haven't got a, a larger block to hand. You can use whatever you've got. So what I've done is I've cut out this panel using uh, the stitched outline die from our happiness set and that gives a really nice cool clean finish with that lovely stitch detail around the edge and then I'm going to use a light grey, it's kind of a medium grey actually, smoky grey it's called Farm Versa 5 and I'm going to use some second generation colouring so I get a scrap piece of paper here and I press the first time down so it's not too dark obviously if you've got a lighter colour already you can do this but this is the lightest grey I've got and then I'm just randomly turning the butterfly and stamping it down on my card in second or third generation and just giving it a kind of random look spacing it out as best as I can throughout the card but not worrying it too much really just going with it and uh, just turning the butterfly so you haven't got too much of a kind of organised look about your design go off the page as well that really works well uh, to give almost as if you chopped it from a piece of paper there and it's uh, a way for you to create your own background with smaller stamps that you've got. So just carry on stamping those butterflies. And this will give a background to our shoes that won't be kind of fighting um, with the kind of boldness that I want to create with the shoes today. I want to do like a, a quite a dramatic contrast of black and metallic gold uh, so yeah I just wanted the background to not quite fade away it's still tying with the card and you'll see how we bring that together but not be too intrusive at the same time so nearly done just the last few butterflies just to do a few fillers on and off the card and like I say don't stress it too much just with it, turn the page, have a look at it, you know, step back for a second and see how uh, it's looking to you. If you make a mistake or do something that you don't particularly like, just chop the piece down and if it doesn't work for this project then say if you chop the piece down uh, for another project and start it again, uh, but never throw it away, you can always make something out of it. Okay, so I think I'm done with the background there. I'm quite happy with how that looks. So we'll just pop that aside and get on with um, creating the shoes from the, the Shoe Fix collection. So do just always pop your stamps back on your carrier sheets correctly. Uh, it really does, after cleaning them obviously, it really does keep them fresh and together. They're always to hand and they will last you a lifetime if you look after them. So I'm using the stamping tool for this part and I'll talk you through why in a moment. Uh, so the stamp set, I'm stamping the back part of the shoe on the black and then the front layer of the shoe on the white. So I'll put it behind just for convenience which you'll see in a moment. So when I'm stamping the larger part of the shoe which is going to sit in the back, going to heat emboss it in our lovely luminosity gold digger powder onto the black card. So I'm putting it over on the left hand side here. I tend to use A5 sheets of card uh, to stamp onto for these kind of larger stamps. But I'll show you in a moment a really cool trick for not having to move your stamp then when you go back to do the second because I'm putting two shoes on this card. So to heat emboss, I've got an anti-static bag there, and then I'm 
using our Luminosity ink pad, uh, which is just an embossing ink. It's a clear, sticky embossing ink to allow all of that lovely Luminosity powder to stick to it and get that great golden shine. Do tend to stamp twice, sometimes even a third time with embossing inks, just because it can be more difficult to see where you've stamped. So to make sure you've got a good Don't worry about the fact that you can see the anti-static powder now, that brushes off really easily once you've finished embossing and everything's cooled down. You can just brush it off either with your fingers or sometimes I like to use a dry, large watercolour brush to get rid of any excess powder. So the gold powder looks kind of dull and matte when you first put it on and then when we heat set in a moment, that shine will come to life. I always use a piece of copy paper here to catch any excess powder and then you're only using what uh, is clung to your stamped image which is a tiny tiny amount and everything else has come back in the pot. So let's just set that now with my heat tool. And you'll start to see that powder change to the shiny gold. to do some of these uh, videos, some of them sped up a bit and some of them this is real time, um, just because if you like to craft along it's easier to do that and it gives me a little bit of extra time for explanations, uh, but hopefully you know, give you a good mix of the two, some sped up and some real time. So what I did there was turn my paper 180 degrees and then that gives you the space to uh, stamp the other one onto one sheet. So, and you haven't had to move the stamp at all. If you've ever had a problem with embossing, or you've almost had like a double embossed look once you put your powder on, it's because there was still a little bit of ink on your stamp. You put it on your paper, then moved it, um, and then heat, uh, put your powder on and heat set. Using that technique where you just turn the paper 180 degrees, you know exactly that it's going to fit, and it stops that double stamp look. So now I'm using the uh, top layer of the shoe, which doesn't have the heel on. It allows you to use a different colour card, a different stamped ink, you can colour it differently. We're going to stamp and get embossed in the gold again to tie that together with the bottom layer. But I'm doing this on white cardstock then, and I'm going to paint it. So same process again, luminosity, sticky powder or whichever heat embossing ink pad you have and the gold digger powder on the top again or whatever embossing pad you've got if you don't have any embossing supplies at all just use a black ink pad or whatever you've got lying around you can still do them 99% of this card and these techniques without the embossing powder on again the paper so it catches any excess and using that anti-static bag it really does stop any um, excess powder sticking to any damp areas of your cardstock maybe if you got a fingerprint on it or just sometimes the oils and moisture from our hands um, the powder can stick to that and ruin your image otherwise so again just a heat set to get that shininess coming takes a matter of seconds to heat set it, just don't waft your heat burn at all, just kind of chase it round the image until you're happy. And I was looking the light <laughs> and just double check that I've got every little bit of the powder set when I touch it or nothing. So the next thing to do is die cut all those images once you've stamped everything twice and heat embossed everything. And there's a quick way here that we can get two shoes done in just two passes rather than having to use the outline die once, turn it around for the other side of the card, and then the same with the top layer that would be four passes on your die cut machine. If you cut both of the images in half diagonally, 
working on each pass of the die cutting machine because you've got a die for the outer back layer and another die for the outer top layer. You can cut both pieces on an A5 set here. I use the Snap electronic machine, but you could do the same technique with any A5 size or bigger machine at all. So the outline dies are really easy to line up. If you look at the point of your shoe, the heel and the back uh, top of the shoe, it's really, really easy to line them up, no problem at all, and just hold in place with a little low tap tape. So I'll just run that through, so that's going to give me one base layer and one top layer of one shoe, and then just do exactly the same again, and I will end up with two shoes, bottom and top layer of each. So now it's time to add some colour to that top layer, and I really wanted to give it kind of a metallic leathery look. So I'm going to use the Betty Ink um, Gold Mine metallic watercolour. So I'm just adding some water to the top just to get it a nice creamy consistency and mix up all that micro pigment. And then I'm just going to very, very simply paint it onto the shoe. got that nice creamy consistency we're not getting the paper too wet this isn't particularly watercolour card it was just some standard smoothish card stuff I've got lying around uh, so by having it not too watery you can handle it no problem and then to get a really really smooth finish once they've dried off I'm going to go back in and do a second layer which gives it a completely opaque look there which is really unusual for a watercolour um, even with two layers uh, and it really does end up looking having a, a texture and a look of that kind of real metallic leather which is perfect for shoes. Just trying to hold on to bits that I haven't put paint. You could use a bit of low tax sticky tape to hold it in place. Done, and I'll just go in and do exactly the same with the other shoe. So, if you enjoyed these videos from me, um, do like and subscribe, give the uh, video a thumbs up, and if you hit the bell, you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Um, if I'm not on Creating Craft, then I tend to do videos on a Sunday, a Thursday, I do a scraps project on a Friday. Sometimes some watercolour attention techniques as well, uh, not necessarily card making but watercolour painting on a Tuesday. So lots going on and sometimes even some new product reveals and things like that. But I do try and get my videos to focus mainly on techniques and things that you can try at home whether you've got these particular products from Thursday brush or not. So same again here with that top layer of the shoe. Just trying to reasonably carefully on used two smaller brush. Trying to be reasonably careful just around the edge. Not being too precious about it at all. I just want the entire thing to just look as smooth and gold as possible. So I was going to dry these off uh, with a heat gun and then it stopped working for a moment. I think it had overheated. So to be honest, they dry quite quickly. Uh, so I've managed to be able to go back in on the first shoe layer and pretty much go straight over it again with no wasting this is in real time so I didn't end up putting it aside I just had to look the shine had come off it in terms of it being wet uh, so it allowed me to just go straight back in with my brush and do that second layer making it that really beautiful opaque gold So also just while I'm doing this, uh, I am back on Creating Craft tomorrow evening, so that's the 4th of May at 8.15 and the channel if you're interested in watching is 683 on Sky, 748 on Virgin and 95 on UK Preview or of course you can get it on the uh, Creating Crafts website. So I'll be doing some more demonstrations with these shoes and these paints, so even if you've got them on the way already from the last shows 
do tune in or if you've just never seen me before and you're interested in having a look at what we do uh, then tune in and uh, I normally do about two or three demos and show you um, some great techniques. So nearly done here. So because we heat embossed and then die cut out, there is very, very minimal kind of outline on the around the shoes. Sometimes you get like a one mil border on dies. It's very, very close on this die set. So there is a tiny, tiny, it's probably not even half a mil with a border. And I just felt it it might not go on top of the black. So I decided to go back in and just add that tiny bit of extra around the edge and just make that entire image that beautiful gold. In hindsight, because I'd used the paint thicker at this point, um, it was painted over the embossing. When you use it with more water, it will resist, but obviously the creamier and the thicker you use it, it has just sat on top here, so probably the embossing process on that top layer was a bit pointless. But don't worry, sometimes you don't realise the, how these things are going to turn out until you try them. Uh, it still looks beautiful, but I'd have probably just used them normally in a paler colour if I'd have known that I was going to do this. So just to give those a heat set so I can handle them fairly quickly. And the more you dry anything with micro in, this is where these paints really, really come to life because all that beautiful shine of that mica, uh, that shimmery, It's a powder but it's not a glitter, it's in it. So I can handle those now and just a quick clean up of my board and then we're going to get on to the last couple of bits that we need before we can construct the card. I want to go back and use the um, one of the embellishments. I'm going to go back and use that small butterfly again and this is where it kind of brings everything together. So the one that we used in the background, I'm now going to heat and got some gold onto some black card here and we're going to use those uh, to embellish our shoes. So same again because I'm heat embossing using the luminosity ink pad. Just going a couple of times, it is easier on black card to see where you've stamped with the clear ink pad but I still always go about over twice just to be safe. Add that same gold powder and heat set that and this is really because it's the kind of reverse of that top layer of the shoe um, it's really going to tie everything together colour wise because it's black and gold again but also then to that background where we've already used that brush of line it's not just going to look as if you stuck them on and it doesn't really belong So heat set that and then it's just a case of us constructing our cards. So I've got the background element that we did very first and I'm just going to mount that onto the card with some double sided tape. where you want your shoes to go, do you want your card portrait, landscape, they do fit it on a card in the portrait, um, if you're using a single shoe uh, on a 5x7 but I've decided uh, because I wanted a little bit more gap and we've got the two shoes there I want to be able to overlap them nicely, I've decided to do it on a kind of landscape version. So once I'm pretty happy with roughly where I'm going to put them, bottom layer I'm adhering with some double sided tape or some wet glue would be perfect here. Anything that's going to sit flat. Give that a good press down and 
gold layer of that shoe. Again, I'm doing, it's going to sit flat on the card. So just some, again, some double sided tape. After I did that, I realised that I hadn't put any tape on the heel of the shoe, the kind of stiletto part. So I'm just going to go back in and add a little bit of wet glue to that. Curl it up. So I haven't got to take everything off again. That will sit down perfectly just to make sure that doesn't come loose. And then the second shoe I want to sit um, a little bit offset and a little bit higher with some dim dimension to my card. So I've added some foam pads. In hindsight, I would have used some black ones here. Uh, but I haven't got any to hand dry now, so I've used the white ones. I don't think you'll really notice or see them. The black ones would be perfect. They are more difficult to get hold of, but they do come in really handy when you're using black card stuff. So that gives you a millimetre or so of dimension. And then the same again, so we've got an even more than of a build up on that top layer of that second shoe. used a mixture of kind of larger foam pads and smaller ones to make sure this foam pads pretty much all over the shoe image to make sure it sits nice and evenly on the card. And it's really easy to position those on, just allow you to be on top of each other. Like I say, that gives them that real leather gold look. Perfect, so just a couple of things to add. We've got a sentiment and the, this happy sentiment. There's a bit of blue and gold metallic watercolour on and that was just the waste that I had from another project where I used the outer line. Um, just to give it a little bit more dimension, I'm going to wet glue it on to a cut it out so it can happen again in some white card stuff. So I'm literally just going to use tiny tiny dots just to hold them together. I like to do this a lot and even build two, three, four layers of the die cut sentiment and it gives almost like a chipboard embellished look thing and just a bit of texture and dimension to the card. So tiny dots with some white wet glue that's got a small nozzle. Some people like to use the glue on their mat and then kind of dip these smaller, finer die cuts in, whichever way you find it. So then we just need to position the other piece on top and then. I kind of work from one end to the other along the word, just making sure there's no big blobs of excess glue and everything is lining up really nicely. It gives you a few seconds with the wet glue just to give things a jiggle and a position round if it's not quite right, but then it will set nice and hard. That's great. Finally, with the sentiment, just to do the exact same process then on the back of the sentiment embellishment. So we can do it to the panel that we put on our card back. one of those smaller butterflies because I forgot that I've got two shoes rather than one so I need to make sure they've both got a little butterfly on the toe and I've kind of held them in my hands a little bit just to give it a little bit of shape and they really give a nice little detail to those shoes of course you could leave them plain but I think that gives it something really fun and there we go so I hope you enjoyed that guys hope it showed you some techniques that you may have forgotten about or even something new so do check out my other videos that will be coming up at the end here like and subscribe 
and join me again uh, in, during the week for another video. Thank you for watching.